Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to the uh, FANAV webinar. My name is Jan Silvan, and I'm together here today with, uh, with Jakob and Michael. Um, before we start out, uh, just a few practical comments. Um, the webinar will be recorded, and the, uh, the recording will, of course, be made available afterwards. Um, should you have questions during the presentation, um, please use the, uh, the question tool in the webinar, and we will try to either answer them as we go along, if they fit into the presentation, or we will do it at the, uh, at the very end of, uh, of the webinar. And also, we have a, an audience today, which is a, a combination of some of you know our converter, some of you don't. Um, but I hope we will try to, um, to accommodate everybody in, in this presentation. So the, uh, the plan for this um, next 45, to 45 minutes to one hour is that I'll give you a very quick status on um, FNAV, where we are and what we're doing. Um, and then we will uh, jump into the de uh, demonstration of the designer tool. And of course, that will be the majority of this webinar that, that will, um, will be this uh, designer demo. And then at the end, we will briefly talk about pricing, availability, and we are also looking for partners who will help us with the uh, final testing of the uh, designer tool. So who are we? Well, as I said, my name is Jan, and uh, I think I know most of you on the list. And um, uh, the team and with me today is Michael and, and Jakob, uh, both two uh, very experienced guys in, in the whole development area. Uh, and I'm sure you will like uh, very much what you see uh, a little later. So why are we here and what is it we are doing? I think most of you know it, but just if there should be any new people uh, listening in, um, our focus is very clear and very uh, dedicated because we want to help um, give partners and customers a much better experience doing reporting um, with Dynamics NAV. And we do that with two products. The one product is the uh, Reports for Nav Converter that we released uh, back in late, uh, late November last year, and which is now out running with a, with a number of customers, um, and, and some of them, uh, or I would say a lot of them, um, already live. And so far, we have been able to manage everything with, with that product. And the other product, uh, to help ease uh, modif uh, modification of converted reports and even building new ones, is the uh, design that we will present uh, in just a few minutes. So where are we today? Like I said, we have released the, uh, the converter. We're not going to show that in details today. Um, I think most of you have seen it or have even worked with it. Um, but like I said, so far we have been able to, uh, to, to get to this goal of, of a 100% uh, automated conversion from uh, 2009. Seaside or Classic uh, to the newer versions that requires RDLC. And with, uh, with just six months in business, uh, I'm actually proud to say that we already have 58 partners in, in 18 countries. Um, and of course, we, uh, we are very pleased with that. So, so thank you to those of you who have already signed up as partners with us. So just for those of you who don't know the converter, um, it's, a, it's a very easy tool, a uh, simple tool, at least looking uh, on, on the functionality. Behind the scene, there's, of course, a lot of uh, details uh, behind it. But basically what you do is that you export uh, one or multiple reports from your Seaside database. You run them as a step two through our converter, and as a step three, you import the uh, the converted uh, reports into your NAV uh, 2013, 2015, or 2016. You compile it and you run your reports, and that basically is what it takes to uh, to convert reports from uh, from 2009 uh, or Seaside. And this whole operation is done in in uh, in seconds. Um, and like I said, we, uh, we have already a lot of partners and customers working with this, and um, the feedback from, from that part is, is very, very positive. 
Another very important part of our setup is the uh, the whole simplicity. Um, so one thing is you can install uh, the solution in just a few minutes. Um, if you only want to run our reports, the only thing that is required is, uh, is an installation on the server. So no client installation is required. Of course, if you want to work with the tool, you need to have the tools installed on that specific client where you want to work with, uh, with the tools. We don't uh, change or modify any objects or any code in the NAV database, so there's nothing you need to be uh, taken care of when it comes to future upgrades and so on. And, and uh, everything we do, um, we only use a, a standard uh, web service in NAV, uh, the one called Fields, or alternatively, you can just uh, export the, uh, the table definition and import that into uh, our tool, and then, then that's the only thing that is needed. And finally, when you have converted the reports um, at the customer side, you can easily combine our converted reports and RDLC reports for the customer. Uh, it will be the same look and feel, um, and they will, they will hardly uh, be able to see the difference. And talking about that, and that's very important to, uh, to keep in mind, and, and that's also very important when we talk about the, uh, the designer um, in a few minutes, uh, because we are not converting to RDLC. We are converting to a format that makes NAV believe it's RDLC. Uh, but we actually believe there are a number of advantages with not converting to RDLC. First and foremost, that is the only way we have been able to do this fully um, automated one-to-one -one conversion of the Seaside reports. That also means that the solution we have now is, is dedicated and focused on ERP, or more specifically on NAV, basically very similar to what you know from the from the Seaside reporting tool. And if you know the Seaside reporting tool, working with the reports for nav designer should be a very, very small step um, because a lot of the, the logic and, and the conceptual way of building reports is more or less the same. Of course, we have added a lot of new functionality, which we're going to show you um, in a little while. Another important thing to, to notice here is that uh, we are executing the reports on the server, whereas RDLC are actually moving uh, a lot of data to the client and then rendering the, uh, the reports on the client. That means that our reports execute what we hear is five to ten times faster, uh, and we never run into any uh, limitations or any out-of-memory issues as we are only... Uh, um, moving the, uh, the final report uh, to the client. And finally, I think it's also a fact that, that the number of resources that are um, experienced and, and who likes to do RDLC reports are fairly limited, um, whereas there's a lot of people out there who know Seaside uh, and the Seaside reporting tool. So with that, I'd like to hand over to, uh, to Michael to... Um, to show us how far we are with the designer tool. Michael? Okay, thanks, Jan. Uh, can you see my screen? Not yet. Can you see my screen? Now we can. Oh, okay, great. Uh, so let's start shortly with the uh, with the converter. Uh, and as Jens mentioned, we have sort of extended the the way that you can uh, get the field metadata out from NV. So uh, you still have the opportunity to uh, to use web services, but uh, but some people uh, find it easier to just use the uh, text export. In this case, I just exported all the uh, the tables uh, that you need to to use for the upgrade. Uh, and here I gathered a number of uh, old two stars now two text object and this old dot text and by pressing convert I can I simply convert them into uh, to our format and you can see in the log this is uh, cost of top ten quotes invoice all these things which are already uh, converted and uh, ready to run uh, then let's go to C sites uh, in this case I'll import them. Um, and let's take a glimpse of the uh, the invoice. So uh, if I go into design, you can see uh, the whole data set in here. So uh, in previous version, we didn't have the columns in here, but a lot of people asked that to be the same. So we have 
columns in here and the data sets uh, just like uh, when you have to do with the RDLC word reports. Uh, so that's exactly the same and you can add new columns and that will still work with, uh, with FNAF. Um, and I've, if I go into the, uh, the source code, uh, go to the top, you can see uh, everything is just like in normal reports. The only thing is and that in the on any report, the pre-report and posts, we have injected uh, a, a code line to enable our code underneath. Um, and uh, the reason why it's this way is that we we have a simple .NET component that's placed in the add-in folder on the server, and that's basically it uh, and all it takes. We don't do any modification to uh, to NAV or, or to the uh, to the business logic, uh, so you don't have to to go into code unit one or any other code unit to uh, uh, to do. Uh, things to get us to work, and if you browse down to the report, you can see you basically have all the uh, the triggers uh, on the data items, uh, and uh, if we go further down, uh, we'll get to some of the uh, the code that we have converted. Um, and you all know there's nothing called like sections in the uh, or section triggers in. Uh, in uh, 2013 and beyond, uh, so we have simply generated these where you control show output uh, to to make sure that you uh, do just like classic where you can uh, turn off the output for certain sections or turn them on depending on, on logic in here. Um, and if you go down to the ends, uh, there's a number also of auto-generated uh, uh, triggers in here which basically enables us to uh, to do uh, the preview and, and design capabilities that we uh, that we to support. If uh, if we make changes in future versions and uh, you decide to upgrade your reports, uh, you can simply upgrade your FNAF reports and we will replace this code with a new version. Uh, so there's no uh, work in upgrading FNAF reports uh, uh, unless you have things in the business logic. Our code is simply upgraded uh, automatically. And we remove what's previous was there uh, when we put in the, the new logic in the reports. Um, but let's go and see how this looks. So uh, let's close this. Uh, so uh, simply compile my sales invoice, uh, and now I press run. And you see that uh, the uh, the old request form is uh, converted into a, a request page in here. Um, and I'll do a preview, and you can see that the old 2009 uh, report is, is here, uh, including the box where you have the logo placed on top of the, the header, which was uh, part of uh, of the uh, solution which was shipped back in 2009. Um, but let's move back and see uh, how to fix this. Uh, so if I run the report again, uh, you will see that we have extended the uh, uh, the request page with uh, an extra field, and uh, this only comes up if you have the uh, uh, designer installed for FNAF. Uh, uh, so if if the the customer don't have uh, the designer installed or uh, you don't allow them to as a partner, uh, this will not come in here. But in this case, I have installed the designer, and I can go in and click the open designer. I press uh, preview again. And the uh, designer is started in here um, with my report in it. And you can see uh, uh, that it's obvious that the bug in here is that uh, uh, you have the uh, the bitmaps placed the wrong way. So let's go and just uh, fix this briefly before we move on. Um, so let's go and test it. So I have a preview button up here. Uh, and I can generate the, uh, the report once again. And you can see now the logo is uh, in the middle instead. Um, if I go back to the designer, you can see also I, I have the possibility of previewing just running a report without the request page and just use the uh, the input from last time. But you can also uh, select that I want to run the request page and then set up uh, uh, new parameters in the request page. Uh, the way that we have... Uh, Designed the uh, the new designer is that the uh, the mix of what we had in, in the classic NV uh, with the section design and also the data items and we we sort of put this into just one design service. You will see that you have the uh, uh, the data items in here, sales invoice, a copy loop, page loop, and then you have the sections in here. 
uh, mixed, and we have done that in order to, to get an overview and also make it real simple to go and design. Uh, up here, you uh, on the top, you have something that you recognize from a normal Office ribbon. So you can open uh, current reports, uh, you can create new ones, and uh, you can save uh, reports either as custom layouts or uh, uh, save it directly into BNV or save it as text objects. Of course, uh, important uh, in other systems. Um, also, uh, uh, we have implemented modern things that so like uh, uh, you feel that's natural in modern solutions like Undo. Uh, so you can you can basically go back to previous states of the solution. Let's move this back. Uh, and you can do stuff like bulk editing, where you go in and select a number of fields, and you can basically edit the uh, uh, the font in here. And any time you could go back and uh, do preview uh, uh, and see how this now looks looks like. Uh, you see that the font is bigger up here. Um, also, in designer, we uh, we have uh, made the choice that. Uh, you can go in and in, in a V just as I showed before and uh, edit the data sets. You can add new columns in a V and when you load the designer, that would be reflected in uh, in here. Um, so if you go to, for example, the page loop, uh, you can see all the all the uh, properties that you, you have in Seaside plus the ones you had back in Classic because we also store that for you. And that basically you can control that from in here, and let's put it back into NV so you can again edit it if you want to do that again. Uh, we have also enabled uh, things like uh, this. Let's pick some that actually has some properties you can edit. So let's go in here again uh, and open this up. Um, so what we have done is that uh, uh, for calc fields we. Uh, we basically uh, create a list that's only the list of, uh, of fields you can actually calculate uh, or, or blob fields, so you don't have the full fill, full list and also fill list, and we also have it sort of alphabetically so easier for you to use. Uh, also, if we're going to down to total fields, uh, you only see decimal uh, fields in here and not everything else, and that's the case for all of these that you only see what's, what's needed. Uh, also, you can go in and decide the uh, request uh, field of fields, and there's also a multi-select capability that makes it easy for you just go in and select new fields in here. Um, you, of course, have your columns where you can gain, go in and, uh, and add new ones uh, or delete old ones. Uh, and then on top of all this, we have uh, decided to design new features like copies. Um, in NV today, uh, if you want to have copies, uh, all of these uh, um, reports have included a copy loop and page loop, which should basically be framework, uh, a framework feature and, and not something that shows up in reports. So what we did was to, uh, to make the copy, uh, copies feature in here, and you can uh, basically put the number of copies on your request page and control that uh, from your request page, and then automatically the, uh, the reports would be written out with the, the number of invoices or whatever you want to have. Um, and we also co construct a, a func piece of functionality where you uh, enables you to put the word copy in any, any language uh, on the uh, second and third and fourth copy. Uh, and we have translated into 40, 30, uh, 20 countries uh, uh, languages, so you don't have to translate this on your own. Uh, so that's an additional uh, piece of functionality that we created. Um, also here on the side, you see that uh, you have all the uh, different control types that you also had back in NV. Uh, and we added barcode, uh, so you can do barcodes without installing special fonts, and that includes QR code and all the different barcode types that you would expect to use. And also, you, uh, you have the functionality of, of doing tables in here, just like you have in RDLC. Uh, I'll show you that later, how that works. Uh, but that's a really nice feature that we wanted to copy from RDLC. Um, if you go in here, uh, you'll see that uh, basically we created a, a, a quick edit for some of the properties. So the mo most commonly used uh, properties are in here, and you can go in and click it. Uh, 
uh, down here. Um, we also uh, found out that even though uh, uh, it's nice to to have uh, section logic in 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 the report and L code, most time it's basically just an expression uh, that you want to have. So we decided to still support the AL constructs having uh, section logic there, but on top of that we have introduced the uh, capability of doing uh, JavaScript in here where you can basically go in and uh, do expressions on, on fields on your report, uh, and not just the ones you have in columns, but you can also use any field from uh, any record in, in the report uh, and write your expressions in here. Uh, the reason why we selected JavaScript is that, uh, of course, a lot of you know AL, uh, but most people out in community uh, knows JavaScript better. Uh, there's hundreds of millions of people who know how to code in JavaScript. Um, that's one thing, and uh, another thing is that it's safe. Uh, so we're using the uh, Microsoft JavaScript engine, which enables you, enables you to uh, to run uh, scripting on the server secure. <laughs> Because if, if you uh, if you run in uh, in Visual Basic or in C Sharp on the server, it would basically en enable the the end users to go in and uh, write logic that can go in and tamper with the server or or, or, or bring down uh, the whole service here, which is not a great idea. So this is uh, running a sandbox, and if you get an error, uh, you you basically just stop the report execution and tell you why the syntax error is. Uh, another benefit is, of course, the richness of, of, of JavaScript, where you have uh, a, a lot of functions here, both math and string functions, that uh, that also can do a lot more than you used to in, in CL, um, uh, and create uh, additional functionality in here. Um, over here on the side, you see that uh, I have my proper script, like you have in, in most tools today, but I also have uh, an overview of uh, of my different controls in here, and and I can navigate to the different ones. Uh, we also have the the data set in here, uh, and um, under Dynamics NV data set, you will see that all the the columns that Stefan and data set are, are in here, and you can basically drag them onto the report uh, and use them directly. Uh, but we found out that it's basically uh, uh, it, it's a lot of work if you want to to go and and, and define all fields to uh, be able to, to drag them on on the surface. So uh, so we basically took the uh, uh, opportunity to extend this. Uh, so on top of this, you uh, you basically all have have all the the fields from the data items. So you see in the sales invoice header here, uh, you can you can basically take all the fields and they they're also alph alphabetically stored in here. So uh, so, so it's easy, easy to find what you need uh, and also drag that onto the surface. Uh, and you also have the the data type in here, so you can actually see what you're doing. Um, also, on uh, if if we go down to to one of the controls, you can also see that uh, we have a format string in here. Uh, and of course, we respect the way that NAV formats. Uh, uh, Text and uh, if you have also formatting learning in uh, in in auto format in in code one, we also respect that. Uh, uh, but just like in RDLC, we have the opportunity to go in and do special formatting in uh, in here, and uh, and basically you have the full array of uh, .NET formatting uh, at your fingertips when you want to do special things. So uh, we have decided to do the best of both worlds, so both support the the classic NAV style of doing it and also this new style. Uh, that a lot of people have uh, become used to. Um, I'm going to move on to creating a new report, but you can also see that uh, you have all the usual stuff that you expect in terms of alignment on and layout control, that you can uh, align controls uh, uh, against each other and, and make things look, look great without doing pixel perfect uh, design. Um, but basically you can see that uh, this report uh, looks more or less like you're used to in Classic, uh, with all the controls in here. Um, but let's move on to uh, a new report, because that makes it simpler to uh, to see what, what goes on. So let me let me close down the report again, and go back to, to Seaside. Um, so right now we have created a, a couple of templates, and there'll be a lot more. Uh, so we're we have this, uh, designed one with a list and then uh, one for a header line report. Now we're going to the, the lists uh, and uh, 
and run that again. Uh, I'll open the signer in here to, to get to it. And you see in this case that I have my list, and uh, by default this is, is customer. I have as a data item table, but you can go in just and click and select any table in here. And again, add variable, so it's easy to find the ones that you need. Um, um, you can see up here that we uh, we basically included uh, combined information by default, and we can do that because uh, having a lot of, uh, of of data items in here does not uh, make the uh, uh, data set explode in size because we, we basically use a method where NAV throws away the data set whenever we have used the data in it. So we still use the data set, but uh, it's not kept in memory for long. And uh, you'll only see that it, it uses one record at a time, just like in, in Classic, uh, which enables us to have this uh, ultra-low uh, memory footprint that we have. Uh, and sort of uh, including common information enable us to have all the uh, the information that's in confirmation uh, information right in the report without uh, doing any extra work or, or columns in the data set. Uh, that also includes that uh, uh, picture is a calculated field on confident information and you can just use that uh, uh, in here. Uh, and if I go to the field list, you can see that I have all the fields in my company information up here uh, as fields and I can uh, just enter the report and use them. Um, on top of that, we also have included all the, the fields as, as field captions and you can use them uh, as well on the report uh, just by drag and drop. Um, an extra thing we, we did was to uh, uh, recognize that uh, when you have addresses in NV, uh, basically all addresses uh, follow a pattern. Uh, where you have address and address two and uh, and postal code and country, and we we're basically recognizing that uh, that you have these groups of fields on so on uh, common information. Uh, you have address and then ship to address. Uh, and if I I drag this on my report, uh, you can see that uh, basically have the address. Uh, and if I go in and say this can grow, uh, and make this a little bit bigger, uh, you see that if I can go and do preview. Um, I basically get a header. Uh, now there's OLAP on, on the uh, on the other field in here, but you can get get the idea that you basically get the uh, the address formatted and you don't have to do stuff like today where you have to put it into an array and uh, and do special formatting using code unit one. It's just in there. Uh, and this is again uh, just like the uh, uh, the copy information I mentioned previously, it's translated into 20 countries uh, and the way that it's done. So, so any species company, they, they have uh, postal code and city in one way and uh, in Scandinavia and the rest of you, we have it in another way. And based on the language ID, uh, also business as usual in the uh, uh, document reports, this will come out formatted the, the correct way. Um, so that's uh, one of the features. Uh, if I go back to the designer, uh, and I should clean this up. You also see if uh, if I go down on the con report, we have uh, included a number of the information fields that you often use. So you have company name, uh, so you all don't have to define a column for that. We have the, the carbon caption I just mentioned. Uh, we have the group total field name. The name of the report, uh, we have uh, uh, a caption for uh, for page uh, in 20 different uh, languages as well. And we have the uh, the page count that's also a useful uh, feature from uh, RDLC, uh, which enables you to, to write that this is uh, page uh, one out of five on one invoice and one out of ten on another one. Uh, and this way you can actually go in and construct these, uh, these texts uh, without extra work. Uh, you can also, of course, control show output and uh, put the uh, the time and the date and the use ID on the report. So this is just something that we we offer out of the box, and you don't have to do extra work uh, to do that. Um, and you can see also there's there's no columns in the data set here because we we basically don't need it to do this basic uh, uh, list implementation. 
Uh, but let's take the list, which is basically the list of Cosmos, and uh, if we start with the uh, with the captions in here, I can uh, just take the the first ones uh, and and drag them on my report in here, uh, and then I can go down here and take the same four and uh, drag those uh, on my body element. Uh, and this is basically all, all you need for creating tables in, in here. Of course, you can go in and edit them and, uh, uh, and write all the values, but uh, this enables you to, to do really, do really fast developing of this. And uh, if I press preview again, uh, you can see that I have my columns in here. Uh, and also, these are formatted by NV because I'm not using the .NET formatting in here. So this is an extremely fast way of, of basically uh, Designing new reports and going back and forth and uh, controlling your design. Um, um, and again, uh, you don't have to do any uh, any columns in here. Uh, of course, you can, but you don't have to. Uh, and uh, if you go down to uh, different column, uh, also you can go in and uh, and do JavaScript uh, expressions where you can. Use functions or uh, combine different uh, different fields in here. Uh, since we already have this address uh, formatting functionality, we also decided to uh, uh, to extend it to do some more. Uh, so if I go just go in here and place a text box underneath here, uh, make it big because I want to be able to to write an address in here. Uh, now if I go in here and and, and edit this. Uh, uh, just to remove the, the text box up here because it's not, not, not needed. Uh, but I can go down here and uh, and take the format address uh, functions, which is also underneath used for forming the other address I had in the header. Uh, but if I go up here and uh, put it in, and then I take the uh, go down to the field group for my lists and uh, put in the address. Uh, here's that's a different from uh, what you're used to in AL because uh, in AL uh, there's this ambiguity underneath that depending on the the context of uh, of what you do with with a, a variable, it can mean uh, a caption or a field number or or value or something else. Uh, uh, that's a legacy thing, but it's not supported by any other language, and it also confuses uh, new developers when they have to do this. So basically. We have decided if uh, if you just have the variable in here, it's it's a variable. But if you use it for something else, it's uh, it has to be a, a text string. But if I go in here and say I want to have this uh, address and uh, I want to have uh, commas around it, uh, press OK, uh, and then then go in and uh, and do preview, uh, and you can see that I have my uh, uh, Address formatted as a text string in here uh, with commas in between, and I, of course, can go and add extra information about fax number or whatever if you need to do that. But this also makes it easy to uh, to really go in and uh, and uh, do addresses really fast instead of using the uh, old arrays that uh, that was uh, in NV even before uh, the the graphics version. Um, so basically, it's 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 easy to go in and uh, and uh, modify classic reports. It's easy to go in and uh, do new reports and uh, uh, and add columns and new data items in in this system. Um, but of course, uh, uh, it's also nice to be able to uh, to go in into uh, something that came from RDLC and edit that. Uh, and we have also started uh, doing a RDLC conversion tool. Uh, that I'm going to show you uh, how that works. Uh, so let's look at some of the uh, uh, 2009 R2, uh, no, sorry, the 2013 uh, report. So this is the uh, the purchase invoice report. Uh, basically, you can recognize that these all look like the same. And uh, the reason why I'm not showing it at Visual Studio is I needed the uh, 9 gigabyte of disk space, so I have to leave Visual Studio, so you have to live with the bitmap. But you all know that uh, you, when you go into Visual Studio after a couple of minutes, you will see this screen uh, where there's a lot of these expressions. And what's underneath is that somewhere in here there's a hidden field uh, where basically each of these uh, expressions looks up a value. Uh, 
uh, from uh, from zero to forty two, uh, I believe it is, and uh, based on that, it will figure out where the uh, the fax number and the email address of uh, of the uh, uh, the company sits. Uh, of course, this is not really productive to work this way uh, unless you are really, really uh, um, used to using uh, using this. Of course, the uh, the new reports for the mini app uh, improve this, but still, uh, that only covers a fraction of the reports. And uh, once you goes into uh, to uh, something that's not the uh, just sale, sale invoice quote or, uh, or order, uh, you you basically stuck with uh, having to deal with the RDLC uh, reports in uh, 2013, 15, or 16. Uh, another thing is you have to deal with is uh, are the tables, and tables are great to work with the RDC, but it's it's hard to uh, to realize uh, which of these rows have been, been written out when. Uh, there's some kind of uh, of show output in, uh, implementation in this, but it's, uh, it's, it's hard to overview what goes on. Um, so if I go in and uh, again design and uh, uh, and this time I'm I'm basically taking the uh, 2013 uh, purchase invoice RDLC reports. Uh, you can also do this with classic reports, so you don't have to go through the designer. And this is basically uh, a one-to-one -one version of of that report into to the uh, now format. Uh, and you can basically see that we uh, we bought these uh, expression fields back. Back to life because we go into the hidden fields uh, and extract the uh, the uh, the column names that's in here. Uh, so we reverse engineer how the format works, uh, which enables us to to go in and uh, and do a new report that's easier to do. Uh, you can also see that we uh, we have read on the. Uh, um, bringing the the different uh, tablix uh, rows in into into sections. So now you you basically have things something smaller you can also do deal with, and everything in here. Uh, and actually, if if you run it, it's uh, it's prettier than the other support. Because one thing we do different is that we uh, we we use a lot of we have used a lot of time on doing the the clipping of uh, of strings uh, correct. Uh, and in RDLC it clips wrongly, so you get characters cut, or you uh, sometimes the the last characters is cut. So uh, if you have a check report, uh, you experience that sometimes the last digits uh, or in the uh, in the amount or even the invoice number is missing from reports. Uh, and basically, out of the box reports from uh, from uh, from the uh, NAV RDLC uh, gives you a, an output that's wrong. So uh, once it's watched to to our format, we we basically fix this by doing correct rendering, and things are output the right way and without any uh, any cutting of uh, of the uh, of the fields as output. You can also see that we uh, support all the uh, the font properties, so font size, uh, bold, what have you, uh, uh, shapes within here, and uh, and and all the f all the features from the the tables in uh, RDC also. Uh, in here, uh, like you used to in RDLC, so we believe, believe that we we've been able to uh, to get the be uh, best of both worlds uh, to to enable the uh, the upgrade of classic report, creating new ones, and also to uh, to use uh, um, uh, the uh, RDLC uh, reports as a starting point. Um, another feature that we uh, uh, have included is uh, is is uh, the capability of doing uh, um, customized reports, uh, that, which was a feature that came in uh, in, in 2015. Uh, so if I go to the uh, NV report uh, layout selection, and again I go down to my uh, 206 report uh, down here, uh, and go into custom layouts, uh, I, I now can go in and create a new uh, custom layout uh, and basically, again, we haven't done any modification to the uh, to the logic in here. So all of this is written in AL by the NAV team, and we basically just uh, piggyback that uh, we also use the RDLC layout part of NAV to store the our format in. It's not RDLC, but uh, NAV thinks it's RDLC, so it fits it's exactly like uh, it does with RDLC. So any changes that's done to this in the future by the NAV team is also going to work here. 
Uh, and you can see now I have my layout in here. So it basically copies the uh, layout from the FNAF version of uh, of uh, uh, the sales invoice, and I can go in and uh, uh, and run the report from here. And again, uh, I can go in and uh, start the design in here, uh, load it again. Uh, I can make changes and I can do previews and I can go back and save it back in the custom layout or go back and save it as the original object. Or I can again save as if I want to export it into another format. Uh, so again, uh, everything like uh, uh, works exactly like in NV and uh, we haven't done anything to change it in a V, it just works uh, now as uh, you would expect in a V, and uh, if there's future changes uh, and it still works with RDLC, it will work with us as well. Um, last but not least, uh, a lot of people ask, uh, so this, uh, this format that we have created, what is it? Uh, and uh, and basically, if, if you look at uh, at the uh, at the word layouts in NV, you can see that it's a string. Uh, and basically, what we do is that we have our format, which is XML, just like RLC, and uh, what Word is doing underneath. And we have a structure just like that. We just compress it uh, into the string because it's easier to deal with and doesn't take as much space up as RDLC in the reports, which is also a benefit. Uh, but there's no. Uh, no magic in this. Uh, you can even reverse engineer this and look at the report format as you want to. It's just a string, uh, and we're just using this to uh, uh, to store our format in and uh, use it in runtime to run the report. Uh, so what you see here is uh, is basically the the headers and also the uh, uh, the tables that we we store in the V. Uh, but it's it's a lot more dense than uh, RDLC is, uh, and it's it's easier also for for us to maintain because we don't have these endless layers that RDLC have. It's it's more simple. That's uh, what we're doing here. Okay, Jan. Uh, so this was a quick tour of the designer, and uh, uh, let's go back to Jan uh, for some more slides before we end with questions. So one is uh, regarding pricing. Um, and we already got a question about that, so I'm sure that's that's very important as well. Uh, those of you who have seen some of our presentations earlier or worked with the uh, with the converter, you know these prices, uh, and they are basically unchanged. So, <clears throat> as a customer, um, you can buy or acquire a license uh, that includes both the converter and the uh, designer tool, and of course the runtime to to run these reports. At a price of 4,000 euro uh, per customer plus 16% uh, yearly enhancement, or you can subscribe to exactly the same at 1,600 euro uh, per year. Now, the feedback we have got is that these prices are, are extremely attractive if you are converting like 50 or 100 um, uh, reports. However, if you are a smaller customer or if you are a customer starting on uh, on NAV 2016 uh, and you still want to take advantage of the uh, designer but you don't convert anything, these prices might be a, a bit high. Um, so again, based on, uh, on input and discussions with a number of partners, we're actually going to introduce a, uh, a per-user pricing model as well. Um, and that means for, uh, for 200 euro, uh, per user, uh, the customer can get access to uh, again uh, the tools and the runtime, and again with a 16% yearly enhancement. Or the customer can subscribe at 80 euro per user per year. Um, this is not rocket science. Basically, what we have done is we have divided our prices with 20. So if you go above 19 users, uh, it's more attractive to, uh, to to stay with the with the current pricing model. But again, this is an alternative for, uh, especially for, for smaller customers. Availability on the new designer tool uh, is that that um, we are now uh, going into a very uh, thorough internal testing uh, that we expect will last for the next two to three weeks. And following that, in, in late February, early March, we would really like to invite um, a, a limited number of partners to help with uh, with some final uh, testing, and then the plan is to release the designer uh, in mid end March, depending on the outcome of the of the testing. 
So coming back to what we're looking for with, with partners, we have said that, that uh, it's probably somewhere in the area of five to ten partners that we hope could spend uh, half to one day uh, over a two weeks period um, and, and thoroughly testing the, uh, the designer tool both in the scenarios of converted reports as well as uh, in the scenario of, of, uh, of building new reports. If you're interested in this, please uh, please drop me a mail, uh, yadis at fanav.com. Fanav is here to help you with reports. We're ready to talk. Are you? 